Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm a DP based in London, and today I wanted to talk to you about translating those emotional scenes and translating those feelings from your script into your camera movements and your lens choices and really translate the emotion through the visuals. Uh, I feel like there is a lot of technical videos and a lot of script videos, but understanding the, the communication between the two and, communi and understanding how to break down a script in a way that will help you analyze your your image and analyze what shots you should be using and know what lenses you should be using and be prepared for those scenes and make the most out of them uh i don't think there's a lot of it so i decided to do this video i'm prepping to shoot a pilot episode of a show and i was hired as a dp i've been going through the script and kind of breaking down what kind of shots that i want to use and there's a lot of twists and changes and emotional charts throughout the whole script so i found that there is quite a lot that i can do translate those into the visuals i thought i'll talk through it a little bit to share with you some of my thought process and hopefully you can get some of it and apply that to your films and to your videos and stuff okay so what we're gonna do i'm just gonna give you some ideas of emotional charts and situations that i can think of and what i would use to translate those into visuals the most simple which is usually a character in distress you have someone that either just got really hard news or something very drastically just happened what i like to do in those situations is make sure it, it, you have to prepare to change so i want that scene to be handheld i want that scene to feel chaotic and almost out of place uh if it's a character that lost their parents and they get the news through the phone it maybe the characters by themselves they're fine they're relaxing i might try and use a very traditional shot i might try and use a, a mixture of some wide and mid shots just to follow the character along everything is fine everything is flowing they get this call uh, I might want to position the phone a certain way so that the focus is on the phone. Something is on the phone and now we're coming to that phone. You start shifting the situation right there. You start with the odd shot right there. And then they get the phone call uh, and they're talking and then they hear their parents died. You don't want to jump from a still shot to a uh, crazy handheld what would i would do is maybe on the tripod have the camera and as that news is going you start moving the camera within the tripod and then i would go closer uh if that was a mid shot i would go to a close-up maybe like kind of focusing on the phone and eyes to make sure you're reflecting that panic that momentum that is happening and that would be handheld but try to replicate the movements that i was doing on the tripod and then go into a little more chaotic momentum to to really represent what that character is going through so that would be a way for me to translate that emotional scene into visuals that i feel like you would represent the emotional of that scene um another situation let's say you have this little kid that is his first day of school and he is he goes out on his lunch break and kids don't want to play with him he they they ignore him they go the other way and he feels very lonely alone in this place full of other children what I would do is maybe throughout the class or something like that, I use very close lenses. I want to feel very close to this kid. I want to feel like I can, I want to see other people within the shot, but I want to feel like he's the, the majority of the shots. So I would use um, something like a 35 or a 50 to keep him close. Uh, but maybe let other people pick into his shot, maybe him trying to reach it out. That's where you would go into a very wide shot. I would try to go as wide as possible to show him front center alone and kind of to, to fill a void. There is nothing there. there is, he feels completely by himself in this place full of other people. 
and I will contrast that with a shot of again wide but him closer to the lens where we can see the kids but very far away very out of focus to fill that distance between them so we're using two shots one where he's completely alone in the shot and a reverse shot where we see the other kids but we see the distance and i think that really reflects of the idea of being alone being alone but feeling alone i think that's what we're trying to translate we're really trying to translate whatever that feels with what we're showing i mean there there is the common ones where whenever you look up at someone you're kind of idolizing them uh if you're doing a film about a superhero or something like that it's a great way to show how powerful they are you get like a a hero shot that they like to call it where the camera is slightly pointing up so we look at them as like a god figure your job is to translate emotion and if you're just slapping a good lens in there and getting nice bokeh that's only gonna get you so far if you want to make meaningful strong storytelling it's by translating emotions into visuals by using your camera to truly tell what's happening in that story because if you have a character with this heartbreaking moment and you don't translate that into your lens and if you don't translate that into visuals then there will be a disconnect because the lens is the the audience's eyes it's how you see it how you hear it how you follow that story is as important as the story itself if you don't put the two together be it very difficult for you to make your audience connect to your story thank you for watching i'll see you next week subscribe for more camera dp filmmaking all this film goodness if you have any questions let me know i need ideas for videos Otherwise, thank you for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you next week. I said that already. Bye.